All right, so if you're like me and have a 2021 and are waiting for Ford to update uh, your system for Blue Cruise, uh, or if you just have a 2022 and want to know how to update it yourself and get those software updates that uh, don't seem to be coming from Ford, this video is going to show you how to do it. It's a little bit of a long video, but hopefully uh, it will provide the information you need, and I hope you find it informative. Let's get started. So what you will need is the mongoose cable. You'll need a USB drive. Uh, you'll need to get a license. I'm going to put a link to the, um, there's a forum. I'll put a link down in the description of this video uh, for the forum where you can read step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, but I'm also going to show you what to do. And uh, I'll put a link to the mongoose adapter. I'll also put a link to the USB drive that I am using. You just need a at least 32 gig. I got a one that's supposed to be high speed to just try to help speed up the little process again. This one's 128 gig. It was pretty cheap, um, under 20 bucks, I think. So, uh, yeah. So I will put a link down in the description below for those things. And here's what you need to do. So I'm going to show you how to get this set up. If you're wanting to update your truck, um, this is a job one which means this is a 2021 f-150 power boost platinum it was made in the first half of 2021 so it doesn't have the blue cruise enabled and just has the active prep package um, and they have been pretty slow at pushing out the blue cruise update to everybody and any updates really to that to this truck so uh, I took it into the dealer, tried to get them to update it. They clearly have some issues and don't really know what they're doing, it seems like. Um, but that's just my opinion. And so I'm going to show you how to update it yourself and what you will need. So this is the biggest thing you're going to need right here. It's, um, it's called a Mongoose Plus. This is the adapter here that allows you to connect to your truck. So you will need this and you'll need a computer. This is the biggest expense right here. This is about 500 bucks. So my plan is to use it and then turn around and resell it and recoup most of my money back. So um, there's a couple things you wanna do first. So you wanna make sure that your vehicle has power. So what I mean by that is you're gonna be uh, putting your vehicle in accessory mode quite a bit so you don't wanna run the battery down to your truck. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna we're gonna pop the hood here and we're gonna get a battery tender connected to the hood, to the battery, not to the hood. So um, we're gonna get that connected to the battery. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your um, positive clamp for your battery tender, connect it to the positive, and then connect your negative to the ground wire that's over here don't connect it directly to the battery my understanding that can cause some errors and things on the dash so let me get that connected i'll show you what i mean all right so i have an extension cord running out here to this is just a fat max you can get this at walmart you can get it at amazon this is an 8 amp it seems to be efficient enough for what um, the updates that i've done so far so you can see I have the positive connected to the positive on the battery and then the uh, negative connected to this, just this little bolt over here. This uh, seems to be sufficient. I've been updating it yesterday, had no problems with voltage. It just kind of keeps your battery um, charged and full while you're in accessory mode for an extended period of time. Um, you can see you also right. want to make sure your laptop has power so I have it plugged in to another extension cord because I don't want my laptop to die uh, during any of the updates you want to also set your um, laptop to not go to sleep because some of these take a long time to update so just go in and modify your power save settings and just tell it while it's on battery or on power, plugged in that you don't want it to um, go to sleep. I'm sorry about the glare. So, all right. So next, we are going to connect this mongoose cable, 
and that connects over to the left side of your dash. Right under here, there's gonna be a white connector. And you just line it up and connect it. All right, now it is connected. All right, and then you're gonna to have to download some software here. You're gonna download this FDRS, which is, stands for Ford Diagnostic and Repair System, FDRS. You gonna double click on that. It's gonna load. It's gonna check your license information. It's going to log you in because um, you have to create an account. There's a step-by-step -step, uh, instruction uh, link down below that you can put. Um, that'll put in the description below. Uh, there it is. You see it pops up. Ask me for device manager. It's, there's my mongoose. You want to check other devices in mongoose. And then hit OK. Now here it is my truck here. I'm going to hit Go. It is scanning. You'll hear the truck make some weird noises. See, it's downloading the vehicle information. Over here to the right, it says performing a network test. It's reading the modules in your vehicle to see which ones are up to date, which ones need updated. Down here in the bottom right, it shows that uh, it is connected. You have, um, it's talking to the truck. You're connected to Ford, so it has a Wi-Fi connection or internet connection. And then it checks the battery voltage on your vehicle to make sure you have sufficient battery uh, to update things. So still, this takes a, a couple minutes to do, but um, it's moving and popping up some things so you know it's not stuck as soon as this is done yep there we go so here we go so now once that's done you'll see this screen pop up and then up at the top you'll see the toolbox thing yep there we go toolbox popped up all right that's what we want we want to go to toolbox and then we notice that it's on all right now. We want to just go to the software updates that we need. Boom. Software updates. All right. So we are going to run this APIM sync. That's the one I just downloaded. So we're going to run it. So there we go. So now it is going. And it walks you through step by step pretty much everything. Uh, it's it tells you here, you know, connect the vehicle to suitable external power supply, so you have constant battery voltage. Don't disconnect or turn anything off unless instructed. Continue. Yes. So we're going to continue. Turn ignition to on, engine off. So that just means accessory mode. So what we're going to do is just go over here and push the button. Accessory mode. All right. Truck's doing its thing here booting up and then when you've got it the way that it asks you then you press OK and then it continues so now we're doing an update and it walks you through everything step by step some of these take a long time like a few of them yesterday the APM I did yesterday took almost three hours ish so you never know That's why it's important that you don't want your laptop to um, go to sleep. But yeah, so we'll let this do, because this is going to take a while. So when I get up to about 100%, I will show you what the next step is. And it just walks you through everything. Alright, so for this update, it is asking me to insert a blank formatted um, USB so I have one in here that is formatted and here we go so it's gonna ask me to choose it from the menu so I select my drive and then hit select so what it's doing it is 
downloading some data from Ford and copying it to this USB. And then when that's done, it's going to give me directions to put the USB uh, stick in the USB slot below your temperature controls. And then the truck will do the update. But I'll show you that step uh, when it pops up. All right, so you can see it says turn ignition to on, engine on. So now we're going to put our foot on the brake and press our start button. You can hear the vehicle started right up. All right, and now it is going to, I'm going to hit OK on this screen here. Now, it's, see, it gives you step-by-step -step instructions. Remove the USB memory device. Insert the memory device into the vehicle USB slot. Software will automatically install. Screen will appear within a few minutes that displays do not remove USB. Press, press close when you see the screen. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to take our little USB and put it in this slot down here. All right, so you can see it's down in there. And then we should see something pop up on this screen. Now I do have my work surface uh, folded down with my um, shifter down, so I hope that doesn't cause any problems, but we'll see if it does or not. I'm sorry for this cable. This is my dash cam cable that I haven't quite got mounted yet. So there we go. So keep the drive plugged in uh, and it says you can drive it, but we're not going to. So Now it is going to start, and you can see up in the top left corner of your screen says system updating. If you tap up there, it'll actually show you what it's doing or give you some kind of inclination of things that are happening. So let's show you that. So there we go, it pops up and says update is in progress. Don't remove the USB device. Total estimate files remaining two of two. So. You can either leave that screen up or just uh, hide it and just wait for it to tell you uh, what's next. It'll tell you when, what to do next when it's done. So, sometimes this can take a while. Alright, so you can see it says to complete the update, restart the vehicle. So I'm going to close this and then I'm going to turn the vehicle off. I'm going to wait for everything to just go dark. I am doing this with the door open. Uh, some people say that matters, some people say it doesn't matter. Um, but I've been doing it with the door open and haven't had a problem. All right, so everything is dark. Uh, main dash display, so now I'm going to restart the vehicle. Just because that's what it told me to do. All right. Sometimes you hear some weird noises like motors running and all kinds of random things but it all ends up working out in the end and getting quiet again so and here like a little I don't know if y'all can hear that but it's like a meow 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 a little whine I don't know it's like it's doing things that are updating in the background or something but this is what it asked me to do so so when it's done doing what it's doing, you don't know it's doing anything, which is kind of worrisome. Um, but you do not remove the USB stick. It's still in the slot until it tells you on the screen, remove the drive. Sometimes this can take five minutes. Sometimes it can take 30 minutes. Sometimes it can take hours. So, uh, yeah. So that's the fun part right there. But, just got to be patient. So it will tell you when you can remove the drive. Just don't do it before. Alright, so now you see that it says you can remove your USB drive. You can take it out. So, you can see details, but okay, I'm just going to pull the drive. Boom. I'm going to hit close. Boom. Alright, and then since it told me it was done I am going to come back to my computer and 
confirm it was successful and then it's going it tells me turn ignition off okay so there I go I wait until everything goes dark take a second alright and then I come over here and hit OK boom so now it's gonna check turn ignition to on engine off so again we're just going in accessory foot off the brake and just press the button now this is accessory mode all right you can see things are loading so I'm going to say okay I did what it wanted me to do again sorry for the glare now it is validating software update So it tells you what passes, what fails. If you have any failures, it's going to ask you if you want to retry. Alright, so then now it says ignition to off. So we're just going to push the button. Turn everything off again. So there's a lot of back and forth. Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Yep. So this is just for one update, right? So a lot of the APIMs, and then there's one other one that's GWN, I think. Those two normally take a little bit more work. Um, a lot of the smaller updates are just one-time deal. You know, turn it on, turn it off, and you're done. All right, so it's off. I'm going to hit OK. Application finished, press OK to continue. And then now it's checking, it's uh, checking with the computer on the truck to see what other software updates uh, are still, still remain. So, so we just have three. So we have a passenger door module, front seat module, a driver front seat module, and a driver door module. So we're going to just continue doing the same thing we just did with the next few. But first, uh, that one I think was supposed to enable the um, camera while driving and then also give you like the side card camera view. So let's see. I'm going to go back in accessory mode. We'll see what version we're sitting at and um, if we have any extra features. It is a hot day today. 72 right now. All right, so first I'm going to go through this car, the cards over here on the side. We got the zone. Oh, see, there we go. Bed camera. Boom. There it is. Bed camera. That is new that I didn't have before. So that seems to be the only new card, the bed camera. All right, so let's go to settings. And then we're going to go to general. Okay, and we're going to go to general. And then we're going to go to about to sync. And now we are sitting at 2-2. O three four uh, revision three sixty four. So I think this is the latest revision for the vehicle. So yeah. So now we have the side card for the bed camera, which we did not have before. So that's cool. All right. So next we are going on down the list. Um, and sometimes when you do one, you'll another one will pop up. So like we did just did the APM. Uh, there's some GWM ones that you have to do uh, That's like a gateway module or something like that. Those are pretty important. You, if you see one of those you need to do that first uh, and then the APMs and Then sometimes after you do a, G, a GWM update Then you will see another APM pop up I'm gonna do a driver door module And I've heard this gear shift module one, the number one on the list there that one continues to show up even after you've done it. So I'm going to go down to the next one here. 
I'm just going to go ahead and download these last three. Boom, boom, boom. And then we're just going to run the driver door module. So, all right, and here we go. So, right now I'm going to turn the truck off because it. Um, so, again, it just walks you through what you need to do. Make sure you have suitable power. And I can look down here at the bottom and see I'm still sitting at 12.6 volts on my battery. I do have the battery tender connected. So we are good. Turn the ignition on, engine off, so that's just your accessory mode. Boom, we are booting up. It actually says, Welcome Mitch up there now, which it did not say before. I don't remember it saying before, so we're gonna hit OK, and driver door module. These are probably gonna be a lot quicker, um, and I'll show you. Sometimes you'll see some of these active park faults, 911 assist, not operational. That just happens during this update. Um, so I guess it's like cutting off communication or something, but generally it comes back and it is fine because you can see now this the main dash is dark, but it's just while it's updating this um, thing here. So. All right, so ignition to off. I'm gonna hit. Just wait till everything goes black. I don't know if you have to, but uh, it's just something I've been doing. Press OK. Boom. Now it's refreshing. And see, now that one's gone. So now we're gonna do the driver. We'll do the passenger door since, since I just did the driver door. So. It's just a lot of downloading, running, and then following the instructions. So. Not really difficult, just time consuming. If you don't follow instructions, if you like yank cables and turn off the truck when you're not supposed to and turn on the truck when you're um, not supposed to, you know, you could cause some corruption, I guess, in the data. So I would just make sure you follow the instructions exactly as they are laid out to you just to minimize and reduce any chance of any kind of issue occurring. All right, ignition to off. I'm going to say okay. So a lot of this, I start one and then go do something else and come back and check it. And then I start another one. So... driver front seat module so as you can see it's just a you know rinse and repeat kind of thing you just follow the instructions on the screen it's just fair it's fairly easy um, just like I said, just follow the instructions. And your truck will do random things during some of these things, so don't worry. It's just part of it. Um, like this one, I'm getting the 911 assist fault again. And like this screen is no longer on. And then sometimes both of them will flash and go off. So it's just um, part of it. And... Try not to panic. So, 
This one's going to take a little bit because it's at step 40 of 1,817. So we'll be back. All right, ignition to off. Turning everything off. Come over here and say OK. It's checking the things. I'm to this one again. I did this yesterday. I'm going to try to do it again and see if it goes away this time. But last time I checked, it had. Uh, I already did this, so. This is my last one. But again, like I said, I've done this yesterday. I started. At sib, probably over close to seven o'clock p.m., and it was two o'clock in the morning when I decided to uh, hang it up for the night. So there's a lot of updates that I've already done before I had started videoing this today, but it's the same process. Just pick them and install, pick and install. So, um, yeah. So there you go. This is the process. Uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. It's not very, you don't have to have a bunch of technical skill. Just know how to follow directions. And the biggest thing is uh, having the mongoose cable. I'll put a link to it in the description below. If you're interested in buying one of those, uh, like I said, that's the biggest investment. But I'm going to try to turn around and sell mine and take a minimal loss as possible. So. Alright, so that one finished, and yeah, see it still shows up. Even though it's done, it still shows up. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to rerun my network test here, to see what all comes up. Um, I'm gonna, this is going to take a few minutes. But yeah, I've, I have heard that even though you do that one, that one still pops back up, so... I don't know why. So I do have a red thing over here on the GWM, so I'll probably do a test on it. And you can click on each one of these and do tests on them if you like, but normally I would just update the ones that need updated, and if you don't have any problems or anything that shows up, then I wouldn't worry about it. So I don't know what the CMDTC detected means, but we're going uh, to read all the modules. So. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I reran the network test, and as you can see, the GWM is now showing green. Everything's showing green on this side. Um, and you can scroll down through there. Everything is showing green. Um, so. My software updates. I just have that one that, sh that shows up again, even though I know I just did it. So that's it. Um, that's how you update your vehicle. My halfway or late last night when I did one of the IPIM updates, I believe, or the GW, it was the GWM update. The second one I went through, um, I received a notice on my Ford Pass that Blue Cruise was now available for my vehicle. So. One of those updates finally got me to where I Blue Cruise was enabled. So that was the overall goal that I was trying for. And then since I had paid for the license for this for two days, I just wanted to go ahead and get everything else updated as, uh, as far as I could get them, uh, which I did. So that is it. That's the end of this video. Um, hope this helped you. Uh, just at least... If anything, I hope to show you the process and what all's involved. It's fairly simple. Um, yeah, things could go wrong, but um, it didn't uh, in my case. All right, so that is the process. Um, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy. I was a little nervous at first too, um, but once I started reading through that forum, and I'll put a link to the forum down in the description below. I'll put a link to the um, 
the mongoose module down in the forum below. That's it, man. I hope this helped you out. Uh, now I have Blue Cruised. I uh, hope to at least show you the process and what all is involved. And uh, if Ford can't do it for you, you may want to try it yourself. So subscribe. More videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.